So here we are. Actually, this tile set um, you can see here, this level is um, the tutorial level. And um, it's quite a sprawling, um, it's a one way path, but it's quite a big detailed tutorial. And there's a lot of signposts along the way that sort of tell you, the character, what you're supposed to be doing in the game. Um, one of the major additions um, that I added to the game that I hadn't planned on in the beginning was the checkpoint system. If you go over here, you can see a checkpoint. So props, uh, collectibles, checkpoint statue. I'll open up in the prefabs. This is inspired by uh, Shovel Knight. And for those who have played Shovel Knight, it's an um, awesome retro platformer, platformer that uh, is available on Switch, PC, a bunch of other platforms, PlayStation. Uh, but in this game, you have checkpoints. And like most games, you know, you reach a checkpoint and then if you die, you can start again at that checkpoint. But in Shovel Knight, you actually have the option to um, destroy the checkpoint and get some money. And I thought that was a really clever sort of risk reward sort of scenario. And I wanted to add that to the game. And so in Spartacus, if you hit the checkpoint, it shakes a little bit. If you hit it two or three times, it explodes and gems come out. Let's have a look at that animation. So we have the checkpoint statue um, as a sprite and a sprite animation script on it. Um, I'll show you that animation actually. Where is it? some reason it's on the second screen you want it to be here okay so here's our checkpoint once it's been activated you can see the six keyframes it's just a simple uh, brightness pulse there but uh, once it gets damaged flashes red and then once it's destroyed um, you can see it uh, goes down into this last frame here uh, now we can see that in action. If I drop our hero off near the checkpoint, there's a level point. Got this level start spawn point here. This little thing, it's an invisible uh, movie clip. Um, not movie clip, it's a little game object. I'm thinking about Flash in the movie clip days. It's a game object that you can place anywhere and then he will spawn there. It's really useful when you're testing the levels. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in on that so you can see him better. Here's Spartacus, and here's the checkpoint. By going near it, it's now flashes uh, with the blue light. And I've also got a Sprite Illuminator behind there, which is um, pretty cool. If I hit it, see it shakes and the screen shakes. If you do it a few more times, gems come out. But by doing that, I won't be able to go back uh, to that checkpoint. Um, otherwise, if I die, I'd go back there. So that's kind of cool. I quite like the checkpoint. Um, what else do we have? We have the weapons rack, of course, which I showed you um, here. This is part of the throwing weapons. We'll zoom out of that. And if I zoom out further, Greek fire. So this is the throwing weapon that you can use this is the tutorial level. I'll use the Greek fire on this guy over here. Drop it off there and watch what happens. Bam, dead. And you got a bunch of them you can drop off from the ground there. <laughs> you create some sort of cool chain explosions. You've only got a, a limited amount of those, but you will find rep in the rack throughout the game. Uh, the tutorial, um, zoom out further. Well, well, didn't mean to do that. That's a little custom panel. This scene switch is an editor panel i found a cool script for that allows me to switch between um the different scenes in the game but i wanted to zoom further out you see these signs basically telling you lesson one jump to avoid hazards lesson two press down a look before you leap you know what i mean it's just showing off the various elements of the game if i get to that checkpoint if i died down the water here i'll respawn at that checkpoint there you go, but if I choose to destroy it and then I drown, we will start back at the very beginning of the game again. Yeah, so there you go. All right, so that's all pretty cool. Now we're gonna switch scenes now um, to, let's go to the Capua Outer Walls actually, that's an interesting scene. This is a big level as you can see here, tons going on. 
But what I wanted to show you is enemies with throwing weapons. So some spikes there. Get past all this guy. Up here, this guy has a javelin. I'm going to zoom in. This guy over here, he's got a javelin weapon. And if I go near him, he'll start throwing a javelin. Oh, so he threw a javelin at me. That was all pretty quick. But um, we're going to actually switch to another level that might show that off a bit better. Capio Streets might have the javelin guy up front. Okay, there we go. So... When you run this full screen, you don't have to zoom in and out the way I'm doing, but because I'm in editor mode, it helps to do that. So that's the javelin. If you block it with your shield, it doesn't do any damage. He throws it every sort of five or six seconds. He's quite an easy enemy. It's one of the first in the game. What I've also added is little um, screen shakes and uh, the characters flash white when they get hurt. Like that. Lots more blood. You also see here parallax. Notice the background's scroll at different speeds now they're actually at a different resolution when in editor mode than in game mode so they look a lot bigger than they will um in the final build in the final build they actually look the same resolution as the um actual front tile sets hard to explain but it, it they won't look as big as that it's actually uh, an illusion it'll look much more fitting oh uh, yeah so this is a knife guy he throws knives at you no matter where you are See, if I'm up here, I'll throw a knife up there. Well, actually, that one's a bit bugged out. He's not th supposed to be throwing from that. He's... Something's gone wrong with him, but we're going to edit that. Collecting a slave. This is basically showing off a bit more what the game will actually play like, you know? But the main thing I wanted to show you guys today was, of course, the forest level. And there's a few of them. I'm not going to spoil too much of it, but cap your forest... Here we go. So here's the forest tile set. Um, this tree is actually um, a bit more pixelated than it needs to be. I'm actually going to go back and um, sharpen that up so it looks sharper like these other ones. But I created a cool waterfall. Um, I'm going to go to the waterfall and show you how I made that because I'm quite proud of that. This is a waterfall 2D. And this has, um, if I turn off these other layers, it's got a oh yeah for some reason i can't show you the gradient oh yeah so it's got a gradient behind there to make it look uh like it's going from light to dark you've also got a little sprite at the top which is actually tileable you can see that when i move that oh that's not the right one sometimes it selects the wrong yeah this one tileable like that, but we want to only tile it horizontally. And that just represents the sort of the, um, you know, the rushing water at the top, little subtle thing. And we also have a little particle system that uh, it only plays a few particles, just enough to make it feel like there's some splashing water around. I didn't want to use too many particles. I actually wanted a um, an old school feel, like uh, similar to Rastan Saga and those kind of games. So what we actually have here is the waterfall itself is a material and it has a um, sprite on it. Um, it's got a little um, alpha blended material with some you know, transparency on it. But we have a script here, which I'm going to fire up. And oh, actually the wrong script. That's the interact with water script. But there is a waterfall script. Here we go. Very simple. All this does is it sets, um, gets the renderer, and then every frame it um, checks the time against the speed of how fast the waterfall is going to flow down, and then um, it scrolls the texture with a scrolling UV offset to go vertically down. So it's a vector with zero left and right, and um, Texture offset represents the speed times the time. And so it actually scrolls down and down. And if you set your material here to um, clamp, um, sprite renderer, tiled, continuous, 
there's a way to do it. I've kind of forgotten, but oh yeah, there's a waterfall. But yeah, there's a way to um, yeah, wrap mode repeat. If you don't do repeat, uh, that texture will scroll down, but it won't repeat, repeat. Because by default, I think it just goes to clamp. Um, yeah, so that's kind of cool. And I'll show you that in action. I, I spoke about it a little bit because I was kind of interested in the technique. All right, so parallax background, of course. Here's our character. The door that you see there um, will change to a more sort of appropriate door for a forest later. Got a couple of thug enemies. Let's see, yeah, there's our waterfall in action. Pretty cool, huh? Simple, but it works quite nicely. And that actually is pretty low uh, impact on performance because it's really only moving a texture and there's a couple of subtle particles. If you were to use a big particle system for that, you're gonna find that it can be uh, a bit chuggy on older machines. Again, these backgrounds, see they're quite pixely, but they will not be pixely in the final build. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. You can actually climb trees too to grab a weapon. So we grab the knife there. You can use the knife on an enemy over there. We missed, oh, we got him, sweet. And this is the forest tile set. It has, you know, traps, some spikes there, which you go, whoa. I'm actually gonna fire this one up in the build mode in a minute so you can see it properly. There's a bookshelf, hidden walls. Every level has some hidden walls. And here's another waterfall. I like hidden walls in games because um, they allow you to put secrets in the games and explores, uh, allows the player to explore the level again and again and again if you're not sort of trying to finish it quickly. All right, let's jump in the waterfall and die. Should we get to the checkpoint? And then jump in the waterfall. Whoa, splash. And we move up here, back here. There we go. A couple more enemies. Yeah, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'll show you that level in build mode. So move this one back here. Because everything always looks a bit better when you run it in full screen. And um, in build mode, it's much more smooth scrolling and um, game just runs a lot better. So I've done a bunch of other stuff in the game, which I'm not showing off, which uh, I you know just want to keep a surprise, but it's actually powering along really fast. I've done about six levels in the game now um, of, you know, I think there'll be probably 25 or 30 levels uh, roughly. All right, so let's go to the game. Here we go. He's our hero. You can see how much smoother the scrolling is. The waterfall, climb trees. There's a couple of like little um, lighting issues with those trees at the moment, but I will fix them up. You can see how there's a few sort of odd looking dark tiles. Still a work in progress with the lighting and so on. Climb up there, grab ourselves a book. There's a secret book on every level and if you grab each book, uh, it'll tell you a bit of the story of the real Spartacus, which is actually a fascinating story. I'm um, reading a book on him at the moment for research and not a lot was written about the guy. Um, only sort of three or 4,000 words because he actually totally destroyed the Roman uh, legions. He, he laid waste to sort of six or seven legions before he was taken down to the point where, you know, he, he took down consoles and um, praetors and, you know, some really heavy duty um, members of the Roman Empire or the Republic, sorry, because it wasn't the empire then. But uh, eventually the guy that took him down was Caesar, Julius Caesar, uh, in conjunction with another guy called Crassus, a very powerful members of Rome. So basically this guy had an army of about 60 or 70,000. Anyway, you can see here the texture is slightly off for the um, top of the waterfall. I'm gonna fix that up. And here's some of the evil knife guys making our way through the level. Well, he got us dead. All right, so yeah, that's all I wanted to show you today, really. Um, there we go, move that back. 
That is Spartacus right now as it stands. Uh, still quite a way to go. Um, we're talking months and months of more development, but I'm really happy with uh, where it's going. And uh, the game is challenging, but it's a lot of fun. And um, I look forward to showing you more in the next update. Uh, let me know what you think of the game in the comments below. As always, thank you for uh, being part of Whiskey Barrel Studios, uh, for writing comments and just being fans of Sword and Sandals. Uh, it really means a lot to me. Um, and uh, without you guys, there would be no games. All right, I'll speak to you real soon. Bye for now.